Hello there and welcome to our daily broadcast called Launch, where we launch into our day and launch into the Word of God. I am Brian Cedars, pastor at First United Methodist Church in Elkins. Many of you I know, many of you I may not know. So we welcome you to our broadcast today. Glad that you're able to join us. Now for some good humor. After a lesson on weather in the month of March, the teacher asked her class, What is it that comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb? A student answered, My dad. <laughs> Let's see if I have another one for us today. <laughs> this, is, this is even better in my opinion. Why did the tire get fired from its job? It couldn't stand the pressure. I can barely contain myself, so I'll move right along. Now for our passage. Actually, a little intro before the passage. A Methodist minister was continually bragging to his friends, particularly his clergy friends, about the greatness of his church. No matter what they said, he always found a way to claim that the Methodists were better. Eventually, his friends got tired of this and decided to play a trick on the Methodist. One day, they dropped a tablet in his coffee. Can you believe that? And soon the Methodist nodded off to sleep. They took him down to the cemetery and laid him in a borrowed coffin next to a freshly dug grave. They hid behind the bushes to see what would happen. Half an hour later, the Methodist began to awake. Yawning and looking around him, he began to notice the coffin, the tombstones, and the open grave. Then he shouted, Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! The day of resurrection has come, and the Methodists are the first to come out. <laughs> now, that Methodist preacher would have done well to have heard and heeded the words of Solomon in Proverbs 27.1. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Now, James in the New Testament picks up where Solomon left off. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. Now, these passages are primarily about predicting the future. Uh, even bragging about one's future plans. Now, certainly there is nothing wrong with planning. Planning is a good idea. Jesus tells a parable about a planner and he paints the planner in a good light. So it's necessary, but bragging about the totally unknown is not something that God wants us to do. Actually, bragging, period, tends to get us into trouble. You've probably heard the story about the two cranes and a frog. They were living in this lush pond area with all kinds of fauna and oh, plenty of water and just as happy as they could be until a drought hit. And their little oasis there began to dry up and they wondered what they would do. It would be easy for the cranes to relocate because they could just fly away, but the hopper probably couldn't make a couple of miles. So, as they were thinking this over, the frog came up with a great idea. He asked his two friends, the cranes, to put a stick in their mouths, holding each end together, and the frog would latch on with his big mouth and hold on while they flew away. Well, it sounded like a great idea to the cranes, so they got the stick and they got the frog latched on. They took off and they were flying together, the great three friends. But as they flew over another area that was drit, that was definitely a drought hit, 
the people looking up were amazed at what they saw. And they began to wonder who concocted the great scheme. And of course, the frog couldn't help himself. He opened his mouth to tell about how he came up with the idea. And as he opened his mouth, guess what? <clears throat> yep, right down to the ground. Now, I don't know the ending of that story. Hopefully he landed in a nice uh, hayloft somewhere. But it just goes to illustrate when we open our mouths to brag, we can definitely take a nosedive. And that's something that we should be mindful of, to say the least. Now, someone once said, the worst use that can be made of success is to boast about it. You know, I don't like boastful winners, but I love humble winners. Uh, I don't really care for much end zone celebration. Uh, I like the words of one coach. I want to say it might have been John Madden. Not totally sure. It could have been Al Davis who said, when you score a touchdown, act like you've been there before. Not like it's your very first time. That's pretty good. Pretty good advice. Well, way back in November of 1877, way before any of us were around, Thomas Edison announced to the world that he had invented the phonograph. Edison's accomplishments are often forgotten. In his Menlo Park, New Jersey fix-it shop, he designed the following items. The household light bulb, a motion picture device, the telephone transmitter, stock ticker improvements, the mimeograph machine, the dictating machine, and much more. If anyone had a right to brag, Edison had that right. However, he humbly acknowledged he couldn't create the simplest form of life. Wow. This reminds me of a passage from Jeremiah. Let not the wise person boast of his wisdom, or the strong person boast of their strength, or the rich person boast of her riches. But let them who boast boast about this, that he or she understands and knows me, that I am the Lord. When you understand how incomparable your Creator is, and then realize how your knowledge, your talents, and your wealth are but gifts from God's limitless resources, then and only then will you discover how few bragging rights you really have. In comparison to the great God of all, how could we even begin to think we can do anything on our own? It's God who gives the ability God who gives us breath, God who gave us life, God who gives us resources, talents, and gifts. And they're all meant to bring glory to the Creator, not to ourselves. That really is a good one to grow on. Let's pray. Lord, we ask that if we boast, we would boast in you to tell of your goodness and your love and your mercy and your, your, just, your awesome presence. Use us as reflectors to bounce off the success that we might receive and put it on you. It's okay to acknowledge a good word and to say thank you, but help us, Lord, to always return to you as the source of all of our ability and strength. And because of that, we come to you to pray for protection and for peace, for a new beginning and a new day. Lead us, we pray, in Christ's name. Amen. Now, when Melchizedek met Abraham on the plain, he instituted something, or at least did something, that was quite unusual uh, in the scope of New Testament teaching. Because in the New Testament, we get the idea of communion, but in the Old Testament, Melchizedek delivered wine and bread to Abraham. Now, it was not communion per se. Of course, Christ had not come yet, and in his bodily form and died for our sins. He did not institute the Lord's Supper, but this is a precursor, a foreshadowing of what was to come. The Bible is full of that, uh, foreshadowing things that are yet to be fulfilled in its totality. 
That's one of the things that makes the Bible so exciting. I wish you well today. God be with you, give you strength, lead you forward. Can't wait to see you next time. Take care. God bless.